Howdy everyone, welcome to The Country Chemist. Today I am covering a technique called scarification. In essence, this is a technique that allows for the damage of the seed coat in order to improve germination rates. For many species of plants, this is necessary to have high germination percentages. Thick seed coats are usually a drought adaptation as this keeps all the seeds from germinating at once. That way if a drought hits, not all the plants will die. The plant we are using today is the Texas Mountain Laurel. These plants are known for taking years to germinate, and I would like the majority of the seeds to sprout in a week. There are a few techniques that can be used for scarification of, the, of these seeds. An abrasive can be used such as concrete, brick walls, sandpaper, etc. However, this is only efficient for a small number of seeds. Since I have 150 seeds here, I'm using chemistry to make this job much easier. In this jar, I have 150 seeds sitting in sulfuric acid. As a disclaimer, I want to say that I'm handling this without gloves, but I also have years of lab experience and all the necessary equipment at hand to prevent damage to myself. If you are doing this yourself, you should at the very least wear goggles and have water on hand to dilute any acid that gets on you. In general chemistry classes, we are taught about strong acids and how they can be effective at damaging tissues. The common three acids covered are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. All three acids can damage the seed coat, but sulfuric acid is stronger than both hydrochloric acid and nitric acid, thus scarification occurs quicker with sulfuric acid. Additionally, we need to consider toxicity. Sulfate and nitrates can both be used as macronutrients in plants, but chloride becomes toxic in rather low doses. This eliminates hydrochloric acid as an option. Nitric acid also happens to be more expensive and harder to obtain due to its many illegal uses, so I do not plan on testing it today, though I might in the future. The procedures are pretty straightforward. Add sulfuric acid to a dry glass container filled with dry seeds. I stress dry because of the extreme exothermic nature of sulfuric acid when added to water. If the solution gets too hot, seed death can occur. After this point, the soaking method is up to you. You're welcome to constantly swirl it for several minutes, or less if the seeds are smaller, or you can let it sit for a much longer time period. This depends on the seeds in question. Texas Mount Laurel seeds can be soaked for two hours with concentrated sulfuric acid and still germinate, but a Texas Blue Bonnet will see sulfur toxicity at much lower time periods. I chose to swirl the seeds once every five or so minutes. At this point in the video, they've been soaking for about 25 minutes. The next step in this process is the neutralization of the acid so that you can safely dispose of the waste. Many bases can be used for this. Some people opt to use baking soda, but I like to keep my costs low. For that reason, I'm using wood ash as my base. As shown in another of my videos, I demonstrate that wood ash is in fact filled with carbonates. I prefer carbonates for acid neutralization as the lack of bubbling is a clear indication of the endpoint. Additionally, if I use wood ash, the final solution can be diluted and used as a fertilizer. I do want to express caution when neutralizing these acids. You should always use small amounts of base at a time. This allows for the bubbling to not go out of control. However, since I was limited to one hand, I decided to make a carbonate solution and add the acid to it. In hindsight, I should have added the acid in small quantities to avoid bubbling over. No worries though. At this point, the acid is much less concentrated and unlikely to do much damage. I dump more ash on the wood as an extra precaution and I leave to acquire more water. As for any of the acid that makes it to the soil, my soil contains plenty of calcium carbonate in it, which will finish neutralizing it for me. Okay, I kind of expect it to bubble out of control, though maybe not that much, because usually when you do this, the bubbles are pretty small. But I normally do this in an Erlenmeyer flask. It makes a protective layer of bubbles, which keeps the ash from mixing with the sulfuric acid. And then I grab a water hose, and when I pour on it, I have a geyser come up. It's like the ultimate uh, volcano, but that's fine. It, the only things I've done since I've left is that I grabbed water and rinsed this off. It does look a lot cleaner in places. That's really just because the ash worked as an abrasive and rubbed off all the algae that was on here because that's like most of its algae, but that's kind of a problem with wood is that it loses its color over time. So it worked as abrasive and rubbed some of that off, which is fine. I also believe I have very, I think the word is calcareous soil. Uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong. That means it contains a lot of calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate will actually 
uh, neutralize this acid. In addition, I've also threw in two handfuls of calcium carbonate as I use up all my wood ash because I had a little bit on, on hand. But this is going to bubble for a while. And a good way of knowing when it's done is that I can actually keep adding things to it and if it quits bubbling, it's, it's done reacting. Of course, at this current moment, it's still bubbling pretty good. But by now, enough of these sulfuric acids should be neutralized that I can actually work with it. Let's go ahead and dump in a little bit more. And see, the bubbles aren't getting much more vigorous, which means the reaction is nearing a nearing completion. I also have a solution here that has a little bit of baking soda left over, so maybe I can dump some of that in too. Yeah, and that's not bubbling. There it is. But it's not bubbling that much. So I am nearing completion. It is closer to being neutral. Not quite where I would like it to be. And if I had more wood ash on hand, I'd dump more in. But from here, uh, after I know it's neutralized, I can go in and fish out the seeds, which by now, oh, it's a little warm. That's not desired. That's fine. Okay, so from here, I can gather up the seeds. And these seeds can then be clean. Yeah, see, I still have calcium carbonate in here, so it's, it's getting closer to completion. So I can take these seeds now. Now, a lot of their seed coats have been damaged. Not entirely as much as I would hope. They're still pretty hard. So I, maybe you would want to leave this for 40 or 50 minutes. That's up to you and how much stirring you're doing. If you're doing a lot of stirring, 20 minutes is fine. If you're not, you might want to leave them there longer. And I'm going to soak these in water for several hours. That's uh, called hydropriming. And then I will plant these. And a good majority of these should be up by the end of the week. At least that is the plan. And I will keep you up to date on how many of those germinate. First, notice my hands are not burning at all. If this was pure sulfuric acid, after about 20 seconds, my hands would be burning. But I have nothing meaning that this is fairly close to neutral at the moment. Probably not too much off from a, eh, a very dilute vinegar, so it's not too bad. And that's perfectly okay. Uh, but make sure it's neutral before you put your hands in it. Usually what I do is I pour this over a screen mesh and I cover it, just keep going with water. That way it dilutes and just fertilizes the grass. But because I do not have that on hand, I am not doing that today. But do make sure it's neutral before you put your hands in there, because otherwise you're going to be feeling a nice burning sensation. Uh, chemistry is great, but do respect it, because it doesn't care what your opinion is on it. Okay. Well, that is taken care of. But, um, let's see. Yeah, this is fine. So now all I got to do is filter. See, there's a lot of calcium carbonate in there. All I got to do is filter through this. And it's not bubbling, so it's done. Filter through this, take these seeds, I'll rinse them off, I'll dump this out as a fertilizer. I might I might try to recover some of that calcium too. And once I have these, by the way, I did 150. Ah, yes, what I was going to mention earlier came back to me. There's different methods for scarification. It completely depends on your needs. If you're only doing a small handful of seeds, maybe this much or less, you might want to just use some sandpaper, a grinder, concrete, something of that nature. But since I have 150 seeds here, my hands would quickly cramp out. In fact, when I did try doing this in a lab a few years ago, uh, I used concrete. And after four seeds, my hands cramped up. And that was very miserable. I can only imagine what 150 seeds would do. If you had a grinder, you could just like knock through the uh, seed coat. That would be perfectly fine. But that still takes a while, and you gotta get your hands pretty close to a grinder, uh, which is okay for most people that work around grinders a lot. But me, any moving machinery bothers me. Uh, call me whatever you want for that, but I prefer chemistry because I know exactly what's going to happen, at least with what I'm working with. Fantastic. And I'm gonna be separating out these seeds for a while, and I'm going to give them a good rinse. At this point, notice my hand has had no reaction to this stuff. I am perfectly fine. That means the stuff is pretty close to neutral and I'm good to go. In fact, due to all the calcium carbonate, it's probably actually slightly basic, which is fine too. But yeah. Normally filtering this is easy, but since I threw in calcium carbonate as one of my bases, 
uh, calcium carbonate is not very soluble. As you can see, it's not dissolving. So filtering this wouldn't go over very well. And that's fine too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this so you're not watching me clean these seeds for half an hour. And I will end up planting these in a dish later tonight. I'll soak them in water so this jar will be uh, filled with water for probably, let's see what time is it, I'll probably do about six hours and then I'll plant them. Some, pr some people like to prime for 12 hours, some people prime for less. If you bubble in oxygen, like using one of those little fish uh, bubble, whatever you want to call them, uh, if you're using one of those, those aerators that you use with fish, you could do this for maybe a day because the seeds are still getting oxygen. But if you're not using that, you're pretty limited. So I'm going to do this for six hours. I will plant these tonight and we'll, we'll see what comes out of it. Okay, so I said earlier that I was going to let the seeds soak for a bit. That was, I believe, oh boy, like uh, four hours ago, roughly. And here they've been soaking for about four hours. You see that some of the seeds look wrinkled now. I see a lot of the floating ones, and some of the ones at the bottom are too. I do think I probably should have soaked in acid for an extra 10 minutes because some of these seeds still look pretty pristine, and they probably will take a while to come up, but that's okay. In general, when seeds are floating, when you soak them in water, they tend to not be viable and they tend to not germinate. Though... There is, a, there is a chance that they might, so I will actually plant every one of these. Uh, I'll probably leave them in here another couple hours before planting, I would, but I wanted to give you an update of like a, a midway progress. So they are wrinkling quite nicely, showing that the seed coat is taking on water. And the more I soak them, the faster they should germinate. However, that is up to a point. There is a point where you drown the seed and it dies, which is why most priming stops after 12 hours. Either way, just wanted to give you this update. I've got a nice dirty glass here with all that wood ash that I used earlier. That's fine. But yeah, and also you might be able to see that the water has a slight reddish tint. If you were to soak these seeds in water, normally you don't see a reddish tint. This color actually is coming from the damaged seed coat. I think is very interesting. Uh, I and I guess to throw one other thing in here, uh, make sure this water does not get ingested. The water contains, oh boy, it, it, well, just I'll just um, use a generic term. It contains an alkaloid that is quite toxic to humans. So do dump out this water. Bacteria will have their way at, and they'll they'll knock it down. But make sure no one ingests these. Uh, there apparently used to be a time period where people would eat these to get high, but if the seed coat was damaged, you would die. So just throw that out there. Uh, the alkaloid in here is actually quite toxic. And if you, are for, if you are curious about these plants, when they do bloom, they smell like grapes. They are fantastic. I do have several of them growing around here, though none of them have bloomed yet. I believe next year will probably be the first time that I will see blooms. Probably somewhere around February, if not the year after for sure. I'm not entirely sure what their maturity period is, but some plants don't go based off of years. They go based off of size. I'm not really sure on these. So I will let you know in a few months the progress on that. But yeah, so here's a good halfway progress for my seed priming.